Hello, my fire friends. Today is Friday, so happy Friday to all. On the table in front of me, I have, well, before I talk about it, let me talk about these guys right here. Some army men, courtesy of my seven-year-old, and I was not aware that the blue ones are the Flyboys Air Force. I had no idea they made them in blue. I certainly never had them when I was a kid, but they do, in fact, make Air Force. Anyway, so I'm going to set these fine gentlemen over here, safely out of the way. Let's talk about this guy, the Creco Model 300. Now, traditionally on this channel, whenever I, I feature uh, an obscure or unusual rimfire, which this rifle certainly is, I try to do a few things. I try to kind of showcase it overall, I shoot it for you guys, and then I talk about some of the kind of inner working, such as a bolt breakdown or a magazine breakdown. So uh, kind of like tradition would dictate uh, one of those two things, but I'm going to kind of bang for your buck, do both of them today and show you the internal workings of this bolt and a quick magazine breakdown. Now, the magazine is kind of, I talked about it in my first video, the magazine is very similar to a Savage Mark II and an Anschutz and uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time explaining or going into detail documenting it because the ability to use a Savage Mark II um, but I'll still show you what's involved and what it looks like inside because the construction of it is still fabulous and I think it needs to be highlighted. So I'm gonna go over that as well. And also the bolt. Now I talked about it a little in the first video but I didn't go into detail because I was saving it for this video but this rifle, as I mentioned, has a wonderful trigger under a pound uh, I have it set for right now and it has a bolt release. Um, the bolt release is an interesting affair where it kind of like pulls out at a plunger. I, I pointed that out in the first video and I mentioned it a little bit that it's a very tough to release. So I'll kind of show you that what it's like and, and you, you pull on this, you pull this way with the bolt release and then I pull the trigger a little bit and it pulls right out. And sometimes it's a little bit more cooperative than others. Today it was very cooperative, which is really nice. And it's also wearing right on scope because it's getting ready for its shooting video for you guys tomorrow. Now I'll just set that aside and let's talk about this bolt over here. Now the bolt on this is, is very unique and out of all the rimfires I've ever owned, this has a very, very interesting internal working that I'm going to show for you guys right now. Um, I will not be disassembling the spring clip or the extractors because well they're like any other system like that and I have them perfectly balanced right now and I don't want to monkey with stretching that spring but they're all the same the system is identical as to any these are not really that special they're not really longer or different than anything else pretty straightforward what I want to show you is the internals because the thing about Creco that's a little bit different. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right device here. Sometimes I need it and sometimes I don't. Okay, so the bolt is in the cocked position as it came out of the rifle. And so what you want to do is remove the grease or the oil that you have on it. You decock it. So you grab it firmly by your hand and that's it. So cocked, decocked. Very simple to do. And it's not any more simple, or sorry, difficult than, I don't know. I would call it probably easier than an Anschutz, kind of, but less so or on par with a Bruno or a CZ kind of thing. Anyway, so you decock it, and then at the back, tool-free disassembly, you start to unscrew this back cap. Now, it's under spring tension, so keep in mind that after a couple of threads, it's going to kind of pop off on you, so you'll kind of see... It's nothing significant, but all right, there we go. So we have the rear cap and where the pin comes for the caulking indicator, it's a beautifully machined piece. You can see some indexing pieces here, which I'll get to later. It has this indexing washer next with a keyway. And there's some notches on the side here and those correspond with the detents on the rear cap okay and forgive the grease and stuff like that all right so then the spring comes out now I want to talk about this spring because listen I mentioned in my first video that these things are made to a very high standard 
and I will let you have a look at this uh, spring and hopefully you can appreciate what I'm seeing through the camera. If it will focus. This is an original spring. You can see it's made to very high standard, beautifully finished. And it has a wonderful, you can tell that they used, they used a, a high quality steel. It has a, it has a feel to it. It's almost like when you get like, um, like a, a hardened surface, I forget what it's called. My memory escapes me uh, with ball bearings, like a work hardened surface, you know, it has a certain feel to it. But anyway, it's a beautiful spring. Then you have the plunger or hammer, depending on how you look at it at the back. And so it's kind of like a spring guide. And then this thinner piece, when it gets caulked, pokes out the back of this as a caulking indicator. Not so, of course, dramatic, but like that as a caulking indicator. So that would be uncaulked. And then when it's caulked, I'll show you that after. But Okay. And then you have this bolt handle, okay? And so the bolt would be sitting in the rifle like this. And then I mentioned it has this beautiful ball bearing for lockup. And then on the other side, you can see the firing pin, which is here. And it moves in this groove. And then the, I'm gonna try to show you. The bolt has a little slot here. And then the slot is a very, and this is, this is I've never seen anything like this on a rim fire. So this is really why I wanna show this, but there's an interesting little a notch and keyway there and you have to kind of get it just right and the bolt handle slips off now whenever I get a Creco and I've had a few over the years this never just separates and the reason it doesn't separate is because the tolerance was so tight in here some old congealed oil were hang that up and what you'll have to do is you'll have to take something like a small screwdriver bit or pick and you'll have to get it behind that and hold it and slide it over but mine doesn't do that because well maybe i lied no there it is so the bolt handle slides off like a cz would okay and then we have this little guy right here okay and this is like i'll call it the caulking paul okay i'll just set this aside quickly because i'll pull out the firing pin i'll get back to that in a second so this is the firing pin and this would be gold if you had a Creco, because if yours failed, for example, you would want to know what that looked like. Well, that's what it looks like. And it's pretty straightforward piece, except for there's a caulking ramp over here. So that would be something you'd have to duplicate. And if you were going to modify the caulking effort on this or play around with smoothness, you may want to focus on that area here. And so the way that this works is when the firing pin slides in the bolt, uh, guide or raceway that's how it operates okay and so you have this sear area here and then you have this is the caulking ramp here and then when you have this little pawl here with that notch that I mentioned this sits like this in this kind of opening and this is a very hard steel and so I'll show you that in a second but it sits like this in the guide okay and so you can see on the other side like this is that little slot I was talking about and then there's that, that, that caulking ramp. And so as you caulk the bolt, you can see what happens there, okay? So the bolt would be decocked, and then as you caulk the bolt, it would caulk the firing pin and engage on the sear. So it's a very simple, but very different mechanism than most others you'll find. And like you'd think, well, this little fella here would be a weak point because if you shear that off while well, you're hooped, which is totally true. However, have a look at this piece. Blued steel, absolutely zero discernible wear marks. There is, get a, I need a pointer. There is a shiny spot on the actual, I don't know if you can make that out because of my focus. Try to make that out. 
see right there in the light, there's a shiny spot, spots or area here where it rides along on this area here. So as it, as the bolt handle is cocked and it cocks the uh, firing pin compresses the spring. But other than that, this little piece has almost zero wear. And including where it would rotate on the inner body here as it spins. So this was designed so well that, or the tolerances are so tight or maybe a combination of things that this tiny, what appears to be fragile piece is so well constructed and designed that there's minimal wear after all these years, only on an area where you'd expect it. And being blued, you would see it certainly right away. So that's it. That's what's involved with a Creco bolt. It couldn't be simpler, toolless uh, breakdown, unless it's, you know, never been apart before, and then sometimes a little bit tricky. And then to put them back together, I'm gonna show you guys really quick. Again, you slide in your firing pin and then like, the whole firing pin itself, I'll show you the tip of it. Pretty straightforward. And these are dry fireable because it impacts on that shoulder right there. Right there. It's hard to get it inset, but I'll show you. Right there. So when you dry fire it, for example, it'll smack right there. And so you can't see it probably on, on camera, but if you check firing pin protrusion, for example, with a straight edge or something, um, it's perfect. So it won't smack the edge of the chamber because this bolt stop stops it right there. So, uh, and, and it's beefy, right? Like it's the biggest part of the, of the firing pin. Nice thick piece of steel where the thickest part of the firing pin, I should say. Right, and then a nice thick shoulder. And then like, you know, no discernible wear there. Although like nobody really, you know, deliberately tries to dry fire things these days that, that I know of. I certainly don't. So anyway, so you would line it up essentially like this. Okay, so that little notch is where it's supposed to be. And then you'd take your bolt handle and your bolt handle has the ball bearing detent that we uh, we know to keep first and foremost in the front and then you line it up with that little notch and it fits right in and so you basically have this bolt back together and the cool thing about it is there's no you don't really have to worry about this at this point as long as you have that notch in place and it really only goes one way and that ball bearing facing forward otherwise it'd be backwards but even if you did that it wouldn't be a big deal and you can hear like the assembly is loose but because the bolt handle is there, it has nowhere for it to go because it stops in the bolt handle. And then you would take your hammer or plunger and your spring and it can go either way. And you'd slide it in like this, okay? And there's that's where it stops. And you can probably hear where, okay? Because I'm, it's bottoming out here because the, the most of the spring preload is in this cap. And then you'd put your your little washer with the indentations that we talked about earlier facing, sorry, with the little marks facing into the indentation of the back cap. So you take that keyway and there's only one keyway or slot, however you want to say it. And you put it in, you can see it's got a little bend to it. So that keeps preload under the cap. And then you just, you know, you can see there's a little bit of preload here. You start it on the threads. Sometimes it takes a couple of times, there I got that time, and you just tighten it all the way down. This is the kind of cool thing about this bolt because it almost has a built-in adjustment to it because of that washer. So you hear, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. So you're tightening it down, you're gonna hear it click as, as those little notches in the washer hit those indexing marks in the cap. There's one, two, three, uh, that's pretty much it. So at this point, the bolt is decocked and the handle is a little bit loose, but not really. Like it doesn't move under its own. And so let's back off a click. And then we get looser and you can back off another click and now it's like much looser, right? So I usually like to start at the, the second to the most extreme. And the reason that is, is that adjusts your preload on the spring. 
but also adjusts the whole mechanism here and how tight it is. So that'll be bolt smoothness, etc. And then when you have it all like this and it's decocked, you caulk it. Okay, so decocked, caulked. And you can see the caulking indicator pops up at the back. So now that I've decocked it and I put another notch on it, there, caulked. You can see. So then this would be ready to slide back in the action. And then Bob's your uncle. Super simple, super genius, designed properly. Okay, so let's talk about this mag real quick. So on the bottom of this mag, you have a notch or um, like a pin, like any sort of mag that's serviceable. Now, when I got this rifle, this rifle, this, sorry, when I got this rifle, this magazine was absolutely packed with what appeared to be a wax and sand mixture. I would say up to about here, like somebody had dropped it in the sand a few times and never bothered to clean it out. I actually couldn't get 10 rounds in it because it was so thick at the bottom of this gritty sand mixture. It was pretty awful. So you take this, uh, like a pin, or a, I'm using an Allen key in this point, in this, in this instance, and you push on that little notch, and it doesn't take much because this is kind of a genius design itself. You push that little notch in, and then you just slide the base plate forward. Like so, okay? Now, this is under pressure, right? And so you have to be careful that you don't lose parts in this instance. So like I've mentioned before in other videos, get yourself a Ziploc bag and put it in a Ziploc bag if you can, contain it all. I'm just gonna lightly cover this while I slide it off with a paper towel. And we're fine because of what's underneath. So the base plate comes off, okay? Followed by what looks like the pin, but it's actually another base plate with a little indent. Okay, or indentation, I should say. There's the back side, looks like a peen, you know? And there's the front side. And then we have Mr. Spring, which is a beautiful spring. Typical of a rimfire magazine, nothing special about that. Actually, what I should say is it is kind of special because the ends are the same. So it can go in either way, where some, some rimfire magazine springs are opposing and you have to be correct in how you put them in. But this one is exactly identical one side or the other. So you could totally flip it. I never do. I always lay it out properly. But if you forgot, you it would be no big deal. Now, the interesting thing about this one is the follower. Okay, so you have the follower came out like this. If you reverse it and put it in by mistake, it's not a big deal because you'll only be able to put five rounds on a 10 round mag. So you just take it apart and flip it around if you get it backwards. It's not the end of the world, but this is how it actually goes in. And it's like a stainless stamped follower, nothing fancy like Savage Mark II in the old days, anything like that. Now they're plastic, the followers, but they're pretty straightforward. Very easy to duplicate if you needed to. Slide it back in the mag. My mag's clean because, well, I like to keep my mags clean. And again, you can press the spring with your thumb. And then this goes on top. And this is the one tricky part. You kind of have to hold it below the surface, if you can see that, because you're going to take your base plate and you're going to slide it this way. Okay, and it's, it's held now, and then you'll see it click into place. Boom. That's it. One of the simplest mags to disassemble. Nothing crazy. Great spring pressure. Everything about it is super easy. Anyway. That's uh, about as easy as it gets with one of these. Um, I hope this helps somebody in the future if you have a Creco bolt and you're not sure how to get it apart. But in the very least, I wanted to show you Rimfire fans how beautifully made and well thought out this piece of German engineering actually is. Um, I would like to say that it's a hybrid of some that you might be familiar with, but with that caulking, Paul, I've, I can't think of another Rimfire that's like that in this way anyway certainly pretty cool. But anyway, I'm going to leave this here. Any questions or comments, leave them below and I will do my best as always to answer them. But if not, I'll catch you at the next one.